Thank you so much for joining me at the 23rd SIOPSA Annual Conference. Um, my presentation today is on stress and coping of medical interns in South Africa. And I hope you'll find my, in, my study as interesting as I did. It was a very long study, so I'm going to try my best to get through it as quickly as I can. Um, so if you have any friends or family who have been in the medical fraternity, uh, much of what I'm talking about today um, will resonate with you. And uh, I hope I can give you a good introduction to this very large and complex issue. So in terms of what I'll be covering today, a short introduction to the topic followed by my problem statement and purpose. I uh, will then discuss some of the literature associated with internship stress and coping and give a very brief um, overview of my methodology. I will then speak about the important aspects in my results before giving recommendations uh, and a conclusion. So internships are well established in the medical profession. Um, the right of passage to becoming a doctor is a long and difficult process and many individuals wanting to follow uh, medicine must understand that from a young age. It's a six year undergraduate program and only the cream of the crop are selected to do it. Um, the period directly after graduation is a historically stressful process for interns. Um, and it, it should allow them an opportunity to express positive attitude towards their their peers, their careers and clinical practice and allow them to consolidate what they've learned uh, in university in a practical setting. So the transition from a medical student to junior doctor continues to be a difficult and stressful undertaking for interns with some describing it as the most stressful part of their medical career. Um, many, sorry, many Many inexperienced junior doctors are unable to cope with the demands of their newly found responsibilities as a result of numerous stress evoking factors, including long work hours, poor working conditions, and apparent lack of support, and the mismatch of expectations of interns versus their ability to do the job, which are overshadowed by the experience of imminent death that is associated with the position. Um, the South African healthcare system remains plagued by mismanagement, disease, lack of resources, which inhibit um, interns to meet the growing demands or the hospitals to meet the growing demands of immigrant influx and increasing population. Uh, this is made worse by our population, which is around 55 to 60 million people. Uh, where work is distributed unevenly across different urban and rural areas. And we have an increasing dilemma in, in the South African population makes up 17% of the global HIV burden. Um, in 2014, the doctor per capita ratio was estimated to be 13 generalists and two specialists per 100,000 people in rural areas. And South Africa currently only has about 1,300 um, medical graduates that come through the system every year. Um, and this is aggravated by um, an extensive and violent, unsafe work environments. There's often strikes and riots in our, our public health setting, which make this um, more stressful. And there also seems to be a massive brain drain with uh, medical practitioners leaving the country and the continuous outflow of skilled doctors and specialists um, internationally. So the study explores the lived experiences of medical interns that are specific to the broader South African context. The study also aims to identify and delineate the sources of stress impacting on the learning experiences of those in internship, the consequences of those stresses, and the coping strategies adopted by interns within different accredited hospitals. The study also covers some of the stress and coping strategies adopted by interns during the peak of the 2020. COVID-19 pandemic. In terms of my methodology, the study follows an interpretivist approach to qualitative research as it is inductive in nature, focusing on the lived experiences of participants. A combination of purposive 
and snowball sampling was used, and I attempted to obtain a maximum variation sample across more than five hospitals in four provinces um, using different levels of hospitals. So there's primary, secondary, um, tertiary and quaternary hospitals. Uh, a total of 12 participants were interviewed at different stages in the internship between December 2019 and March 2020. So this was ranged from people just starting their internship to those finishing their internship. Uh, Semi-structured in, uh, interviews were used for data collection and a thematic analysis was used to organize, manage and capture the richness of the data. So internships are described as programs that are used to provide students with hands-on experience uh, and enhance their learning and understanding of a particular area of study. There are several professions that require supervised practice um, after attaining a, pre a prescribed level of academic training. Industrial psychologists are one of them. Um, and internships are a globally accepted practice um, that allow individuals to obtain the relevant exposure and training in a supervised environment uh, to gain necessary competence associated with a particular practice profession. Uh, medical interns are required to complete a 24-month internship, so two years, uh, where they rotate through compulsory domains of medicine or the different subspecialities, and interns are required to keep a compulsory logbook, which requires uh, them as a prerequisite for their registration. Uh, this logbook ensures that interns meet minimum criteria and get su sufficient exposure to the appropriate procedures such as a caesarean section. So very similar to what industrial psychologists need to do in terms of a portfolio of evidence. So the term stress has become a common theme in our daily discourse to describe numerous emotions that occur in relation to our everyday activities. There's a stress that senses on the rise and has become an idiom used to describe a variety of problems, ailments, stimuli and circumstances deemed to be stressful. Although there has been numerous attempts to define stress, a conclusive definition has uh, yet to be reached, but stress has been used in many different situations to in some to emphasize the metallurgical tension in the engineering environment, the psychological, physical strain on an individual, as well as common use as a verb to place emphasis on an idea. The definition that I use to describe stress is the interaction between three elements, so perceived demand, perceived ability to cope, and the perception of the importance of being able to cope with the demand. Um, there are uh, part of the extensive debate surrounding stress is the result of three main traditional approaches uh, to conceptualizing stress, so the epidemiological, psychological, and biological. The epidemiological tradition is focused on defining what stimuli, circumstances, and experiences are deemed to be stressful through consensual agreement with others, uh, that these stimuli um, like constitute a threat to social or physical well-being of the individual. And the assumption of the tradition is that each individual will experience the same level of stress when encountering certain life events with larger changes resulting in an increased level of stress. When comparing this to the psychological tradition, the key contrast is that the psychological tradition does not assume that all individuals will experience stress in the same way. And it holds that some um, may find things more stressful than others. And so it's concerned with individuals, life events and experiences and their appraisal of threats. Um, the biological tradition emphasizes the effect of stress has on the physiological symptoms that are important to maintain the balance and functioning of both metabolic and hormonal processes. Building on those traditions described above, psychologists have also come to view stress from three main theoretical approaches, so as a stimulus, as a response, and as a continuous interaction between the organism and the environment, namely a transaction. Um, in the theory of stress as a, as a stimulus, so stress can be viewed as a significant, or, a significant event or change that requires response to demand. Um, in other words, it is either adjustment or adaptation, adaptation to demanding or threatening uh, stimuli perceived to be stressful and established stressor. The response approach 
to stress holds that stress occurs as a reaction to other stresses and can be behavioral, cognitive or physiological in nature. So the most common model known in this case is the general adaptation syndrome uh, from Hansel, and which describes the response approach uh, as, a, as consisting of three phases, which is alarm, resistance and exhaustion. And it highlights uh, the nature of human response to stress, with, uh, to stress which is uh, we all know as the fight or flight response. And the last approach holds that stress is an inherently interactive and dynamic concept, which is why the transactional model of stress places emphasis on the continuous relationship between the individual and the environment, hi highlighting the mismatch between uh, perceptual demands of the situation and the resources available to meet those demands or cope with them. Just a uh, brief touch on the workplace stress. So organizational workplace stress is a global phenomenon and has been linked to poor health and poor performance, poor well-being issues in a variety of organizational studies. The healthcare system is a stressful occupational setting and as government hospital, hospitals become more strained, so the demands from doctors who work within them increase, adding to the high likelihood of stress and strain-related illnesses. Mm -hmm. Um, sorry, for, for these individuals. So junior doctors are considered to be the most vulnerable group in the hospital setting as they are required to adapt to new work environment in what is considered to be a demanding and unforgiving work conditions. Um, in terms of coping, coping is considered to be fundamental in understanding the effects of stress on people and is argued to regulate the effects of adverse life events. So coping is believed to be circumstantial and may shift depending on whether the problem is situational or symptomatic and can be viewed as either positive or negative. Positive coping strategies include both problem solving and reappraisal, or those seen as negative um, consequences include avoidance, denial, social withdrawal, and substance abuse. Uh, coping has been expressed as the constant cognitive and behavioral changes necessary to manage both external and internal internal demands that are praised as taxing and are in excess of the resources available to the individual. It is argued that stress is not solely responsible for individuals' well-being and that a person's ability to cope with stress plays a significant role in their health. Uh, stress is seen as a natural part of life, hence an effective coping mechanism is needed to minimize the detrimental consequences that stress can have on an individual's health, moral, morale and social functioning. It is suggested that those individuals who are able to effectively cope with stress can stretch coping limits. Although this may lead to increased levels of stress, it is believed that pushing these limits uh, may reward individuals and have positive and more positive and satisfactory outcomes. Um, it's suggested that coping can be split into two broad categories, either adaptive or maladaptive coping, also known as problem-focused um, or emotion-focused coping strategies. So problem-focused strategies are seen to have fewer negative uh, effects on health outcomes as a result of exposure to stresses, while uh, emotion-focused strategies are seen to highlight levels of negative health outcomes and are often associated with self-blame, rumination or avoidance behaviours. Um, they should not be considered as uh, considered in independent of one another, nor are they competing strategies, but can be com um, viewed as complementary and may form part of the entire coping process. Um, so in terms of the results, there were seven broad sources of stress for interns. Uh, in terms of the, the, the research questions that we asked, there were about eight open-ended questions such as, tell me about your work environment or do you experience stress in your work environment? How do you experience your colleagues? So these are the kind of questions that we posed to candidates. And it really gave us so much information with some interviews, uh, interviews lasting more than two hours long. So, Firstly, the transition into internship or into medicine is seen as a long and arduous process and contributes to the internship experience, making it an area of interest that should not be overlooked. 
Um, the application and placement process for internship starts in the final year of university. Uh, and uh, it's a process that interns find extremely difficult and stressful with a, a inconsistent, unreliable and lack of communication from the Department of Health placing uh, a lot of pressure on interns during this time due to uncertainty. <clears throat> um, the transition from uh, being a student to a doctor is another major factor with uh, many interns explaining that well, although they had done 24 hour calls, as a student, uh, the responsibility that came with becoming an internship made it extremely difficult and that, uh, well, although they felt that the university had pre uh, prepared them, there were still concerns that the, the, the transition was extremely difficult and that they weren't always fully prepared for what was to come. The uncertainty of first rotations uh, was seem to be particularly stressful because uh, interns were required to uh, learn the magnitude of the, their job responsibility and they, find, they come to the realization that they, that they need to be competent doctors from day one. Uh, and they explained how naive they were and how little they knew about the workplace. And it's quite overwhelming because they didn't have the necessary support. They may have theoretical knowledge, but they still needed to learn the systems processes and administration associated with the new hospital that they uh, were joining. In terms of in terms of roles and responsibilities, they spoke about a lot of role um, ambiguity, no clear job descriptions. Um, what they were required to do was not clearly defined, uh, uh, clearly de uh, delineated. So they were often confused with their duties and what their roles and responsibilities were and uh, who took care of what in the hospital in relation to admin and paperwork and telephone calls and organizing beds. So that all had a significant impact on interns. So participant six, um, in terms of transition, the transition from student to doctor, spoke about the big jump is that now um, you do 24 hour calls. That's number one. Number two, as an intern, you feel like now this person's life is in your hands. In med school, you could always tell someone, hey, look, I can't do this. This is not, this is above, you know, this is above my scope as a student. And as an intern, the patient is yours. You are in control of the patient's health. So you do everything you can. If it means you're going to spend five hours with that patient, sorting that patient out, you're going to do that. Um, so hospital infrastructure, was also seen as an issue that the public healthcare system is complex environment in which to work with each of its many hospitals presenting unique challenges that are out of the control of the intern. These uh, differences range from basic facilities and resources to state of the art centers. So uh, like I mentioned earlier, there's primary, uh, secondary, tertiary and quaternary hospitals with um, primary healthcare encompass, encompassing clinics and regional hospital or small hospitals and quaternary hospitals are state-of-the-art well-equipped tertiary like hospitals associated with universities. So it's clear from the findings that there were significant differences in the terms of resources, staff, supervision and responsibility across those different level hospitals throughout the country, uh, which greatly influenced the experience that intern will have in, uh, in a hospital. And it's something that needs to be considered and looked at going forward. Um, hospital facilities, although not technically stressful, the infrastructure and facilities that healthcare workers are subjected to cannot be considered economically sound or ergonomically sound, sorry, and often contribute to the discomfort of interns. So with some of them explaining that they were required to work in extremely hot environment up to 35 degrees without proper ventilation or air conditioning. And this poor ventilation actually puts them at increased risk of airborne diseases such as TB. And um, this is amongst other issues of cleanliness that some hospitals have. A lack of opportunities and exposure was also considered a major stress factor for interns, suggesting that there were uh, that learning opportunities were limited and this often helps them ameliorate stress and anxiety in the hospital setting where training, learning and teaching opportunities were often seen as positive. So um, 
and this was a major challenge for interns who weren't getting the, the learning opportunities and exposure and practical skills that is required from the internship um, pr process. Uh, lack of resources have been spoken about in many studies in many industries. It's not uh, unknown to people uh, that our uh, public health care system lacks many of these instances. Um, access to key equipment and services were considered to be a major issue, um, not having um, access to x-rays or radiographers or CT scanners. Uh, bed shortages were a massive issue, extremely frustrating and stressful and time consuming for interns having to look for beds where other uh, patients were put on stretchers, the benches or the floor, and there was limited access to ICU beds. Uh, there's also um, several occasions where, you know, basic um, things such as linen or sterile instruments, uh, medicines are not available to, to interns during their, their work. Um, lack of psychological support and debriefing, so access to um, the lack of access to these to, to psychological support and, and debriefing opportunities were seen as problematic for interns, with some highlighting that insufficient counselling uh, was available for traumatic or violent or even neg negligent cases in the hospital uh, where interns have come across certain instances that they would like to debrief and there's just no access to anyone. So the, like I mentioned, there's a numerous subspecialities in medicine where interns are required to rotate and each one is very significantly in how much stress is experienced in uh, in that department and what type of stressor they are, the, what type and uh, how severe the st uh, stress they are subjected to. So, uh, and it's largely based on the nature of the work that they are required to deal with. So in terms of family medicine, uh, the, the main challenge is with the lack of guidance and support provided by uh, seniors as uh, interns are often required to work in clinics and district hospitals and don't have access to, to senior personnel. And uh, in this case, they often find themselves uh, isolated and uh, not really knowing what to do. Internal medicine is an innately stressful department for a multitude of reasons, but most significant and common factor that was considered um, stressful was uh, death. And uh, that's because internal medicine deals with very strict uh, sick or terminally ill patients who are under critical condition and that seems to play, put a lot of pressure on interns. Uh, obstetrics and gynecology was seen to be the most busy or hectic pressurized rotation uh, as interns have very little time to eat, sleep or do anything for that matter as mothers and babies are considered in, extremely important in the hospital and mat uh, maternal death is uh, absolutely taboo. So um, it's it's quite a demanding and unpredictable de uh, department for interns and um, you know unforeseen complications can happen immediately and this places a lot of pressure on interns in that department. Um, and associated with that is pediatrics. Uh, pediatrics are often required to assist obst obstetricians uh, with um, the, the newborn babies and they saw this as extremely stressful because they're often given unresponsive newborn babies who uh, are, are lifeless bodies essentially and and this is considered to be extremely traumatic for interns who have not had the proper exposure and training to be able to resuscitate new newborns in this case. Um, surgery was extremely busy with very long work hours course constantly exceeded the prescribed work hours as provided by the HBCSA and interns felt that they were often being irresponsible um, and, and could become dangerous when they are required to operate on um, individuals when they're half asleep. Uh, orthopedics was not as stressful as some of the other departments, however, they, they noted many systems system issues with hospitals that uh, impacted on their ability to do their job.
Um, in terms of hierarchy and interpersonal conflict, interactions and interpersonal relationships uh, largely influence the environment in which an individual works. Thus, it is important to emphasize the types of relationships that interns have with colleagues that influence uh, their experiences in the, the workplace. Um, when considering the interactions and relationships, it is important to, uh, to remember that experiences are person dependent and uh, this is not a generalization. However, many of these issues have come up too many times to be considered uh, anomalies. So um, the medical fraternity is still considered to be uh, a very, have a very strong hierarchy and the strict chain of command and this makes it very difficult for interns. Um, in terms of management and leadership concerns, uh, interns expressed that in order for hospitals to function optimally, it's important that crucial roles are occupied by competent and knowledgeable, knowledgeable and ethical leaders in order to drive effective patient care throughout the hospital. And there were views that um, management of hospitals were often placed in there as a result of undue political influence, which uh, often um, impeded hospital effectiveness and efficiency. So this was a major challenge for, for interns. Um, the healthcare setting provides a, a unique and dynamic uh, and dynamic interactions among interactions among colleagues as patients are responsible are, are the responsibility of the, the collective. So uh, multiple individuals are constantly treating and monitoring the same patient and each uh, has their respective role to play. However, roles and duties often become indistinct with failings by some having consequences for the entire system. So interns highlighted uh, colleagues as a key contributor to stress uh, that they experienced in the, the, the hospital as they felt that they could not, could not always, uh, or some colleagues were considered to be unreliable and um, made poor decisions and this impacted their, their ability to, to cope with stress. So the lack of uh, support and supervision was perceived to be a significant issue for interns and is considered to be a significant stress factor by the majority of participants in the study. So support was broken into two distinct meanings. Um, in one instance, support is used to describe the actual mental and emotional support and advice that is provided by uh, others, while the second form of support explains the actual physical presence of that individual to provide uh, assistance um, if need be in uh, a procedure or operation. Um, and often both of these were lacking in the, the hospital setting or perceived to be lacking by interns. Um, there are many scenarios and interactions that or if, if, um, confronted by, by interns that put them in moral and ethical dilemmas with many of the instructions provided by the senior doctors that um, to be questionable at times. So uh, some interns explained that they considered this to be negligent and it put them in difficult position and un placed them under intense and emotional mental strain. Uh, based on the responses by interns, the, one of the biggest issues was the consultant's indifference towards interns. And they explained that uh, interns were, uh, or consultants were often uh, impersonal. Uh, they found them to be arrogant and unapproachable. And, and this was considered to be quite negative um, for interns. They also described that consultants would often with withhold signing their logbooks or threaten not to sign their logbooks if they were unhappy with uh, how their interns were reacting and, and this placed, you know, uh, a bit of strain on interns. But um, yeah, they also explained that departments were also overrun by politics among leadership and they used interns as a buffer to, um, to manage power struggles and arguments internally. 
medical officers and registrars are senior personnel and they are there to to teach and provide mentorship to interns. So those who were able to build rapport saw this uh, to be a great thing. However, uh, having a negative relationship with these individuals also uh, severely impacted on um, in terms of ability to deal with stress. So uh, something that came up is what they call a chronic MO, which is a, a chronic medical officer. And they believe that these individuals are, uh, and th like I said, this is a generalization. It's not the case for all um, medical officers who have been in the department for a long time, but uh, they state that these individuals do not keep up with protocols in the hospitals and are often unreliable and lazy and um, this has a negative in, uh, outcome on patient care and places undue pressure on uh, interns. Interns also found their colleagues to cause some stress, especially if they were uh, considered to be incompetent or lazy um, and have a, a poor work ethic. So they're required to work as teams and if one individual is not pulling their weight, then that impacts the whole team. And um, they explain that often individuals will just take sick days or mental health days and um, this completely put a lot of pressure on the rest of the interns who did what was required of them. Lastly, um, nurses. So there is contradictory views in terms of um, interns interactions with nurses ranging from excellent to negligent. Um, although interns felt that for the most part um, nurses were good. They did believe that the nurses could be spied for without uh, any provocation. And they, they described that nurses could make or break the internship. And especially in terms of call, if you had a good relationship with a the nurse, then you could do uh, things would be better. But if poor relationships could make things um, extremely difficult. Um, just in terms of the workload, uh, the interns ex explained that they were required to do the majority of the work in the, the hospital and were often felt overworked and burnt out, with some mentioning that they could work for 12 days continuously without a break. Uh, we all know that South Africa has high patient loads and many interns explained that their, their patients were often required to sit on benches or stretches or in the corridors and like they just had very little time to examine patients and they, uh, and this increased the likelihood that they would miss ailments or minor complaints might be overlooked. Um, and this then would impact on patient care or the lack thereof. And they just said they were overwhelmed with the hordes, uh, hordes of patients that uh, require care and the public healthcare system does not have the capacity to meet patient needs, placing increased pressure on interns and other staff. And this lead often uh, leaves them feeling stressed and helpless. Um, long work hours is nothing new. Although work hours have been reduced in recent years, interns still require uh, explain that they work extremely long hours. And um, although they're not supposed to work or exceed the 80 hour overtime limit each month, uh, many of them do, and they often found that these hours are unreasonable and unnecessary. Um, lack of sleep was, uh, is not a direct stressor in itself, um, but the expectation of not being able to sleep creates a, lo a lot of anxiety, so it elicited anxiety from interns, and they, they often said they were required to do operations with, uh, and they haven't slept for 30 hours, and the, the fear of making a mistake or doing more um, harm than good uh, created a lot of stress for, for interns. Uh, call, call seemed to be the climax of perceived stress for interns and appear to be the breaking point for many. Uh, although unpleasant, overtime is a requirement of internship and is compulsory, so calls are considered to be extremely stressful and very busy, uh, and uh, individuals are required to deal with high-risk patients. So. Uh, this this places a lot of strain on individuals. They often uh, find themselves with pre-call anxiety and dread. Um, they, um, yeah, they'll be required to work silly hours and feel horrible at three o'clock in the morning. And this 
um, was a, a major issue for, for most interns, if not all. Um, so what is what makes medicine particularly stressful is the nature of the work that they're dealing with. Um, it's just inherent in the, with the job that, it, you know, death is a, a real thing uh, and it's they will be required to confront death and dying individuals on a daily basis. Um, so this took a major emotional toll on individuals, especially with sudden and unexpected deaths experienced as more stressful. And interns also explained that having to to explain death or that someone had died to family members uh, placed a lot of emotional strain on them and having to ma maintain that professionalism. Mistakes and errors also um, impacted the, the level of stress experienced by interns. Uh, where they often felt a lot of anxiety or panic um, when they realized they had made an error and they could um, think about this for, for weeks and uh, ponder on what happened to the patient and this um, was not great, uh, good for the emotional state and yeah um, they often worried that they gave patients uh, the incorrect dosages because they're just working um, constantly and can't remember who they gave what to and there is also the fear that you know there's an impending risk of litigation, which remains a concern for for doctors, even though interns are not liable at that mm -hmm. that stage in their career. Um, like I mentioned earlier, there's also the chance of disease exposure. So not only TB, but there are many instances where individuals have exposure to uh, blood and uh, prick themselves with needles or have a blood splash, and this. Um, get, exposes them to um, other diseases such as HIV and, um, and yeah, they said that safety protocols weren't always that easily accessible, but post-exposure post prof prophylaxis was, was e easily accessible. So uh, the, the counseling wasn't accessible, but the, the, the process behind it was. Um, and in terms of safety concerns, um, numerous hospitals or most of the hospitals are not in the safest environment and um, the, the immediate vicinity around hospitals is often you know uh, deep in the cities and there are many instances where uh, individuals have been uh, attacked or there's been civil unrest and individuals do not actually feel safe in the work environment and or they've been harassed in the parking lots of the hospitals or um, there's many cases like that so that was another concern for uh, a number of interns. Um, regulatory bodies are not a direct cause of stress in the sense of st stresses in the workplace for interns. However, their policies directly impact the environment interns are subjected to and the kind of supervision they receive. So if uh, regulatory bodies do not effectively implement their own rules and regulations, then they are essentially complicit in creating an ineffective uh, healthcare setting. So it's important to understand that their actions and decisions or lack thereof are largely responsible for uh, the, the stress incurred by interns. Um, so uh, interns explained that, you know, the numerous um, shortcomings by the HPCSA and hospitals and the, the kind of training and support that they're provided. Um, um, they explain that you know the HP says A does an audit and then they ask interns for advice but don't take it. Uh, interns also explain that they've come across people who have exposed or reported fraud and corruption and then the HPCSA does uh, nothing in this regard so it makes it very difficult for them. Um, um, the Department of Health uh, also as mentioned earlier, they have major issues with the placement process early on in the internship and um, participants believe that the Department of Health is uh, unperturbed by placements of interns, community service doctors uh, and lack sympathy and unwilling to reconsider allocations when interns uh, appealed placements. Uh, they, they also felt that the healthcare system, like many government departments, is affected by politics, fraud and corruption, and this negatively impacts on the resources available to 
in terms of all the work, the healthcare system in general. So this contributes to their, their challenges and places unnecessary pressure. Um, so coping strategies of medical interns were separated into two main categories, so adaptive and maladaptive adaptive strategies. And adaptive, we have those strategies that were initiated by the work environment and those that are adopted by the individual. And then um, we, lastly, we had in turn progression highlight. So fundamental for the successful progression throughout the medical profession is the ability to cope with stressful and unpredictable incidents and situations. Uh, the public health setting provides interns entering uh, the system with numerous challenges and their ability to effectively cope with these difficulties is a precursor for the amount of stress and strain they will enjoy throughout their uh, careers. So in terms of adaptive co coping strategies, um, the literature review alluded to positive or adaptive coping strategies, which uh, emerged in the study as two separate sections. So in environment initiated coping strategies, we have uh, mortality and morbidity meetings. So interns explained that the value of uh, M and M meetings for coping with death in the department setting. So it allowed them deep uh, brief, debriefing and a more formal setting, which allowed them for learning opportunities. And it, it discussed the sequence of events, and this allowed interns to see where they had made the mistakes or uh, learn from from errors um, that had happened in the hospital. And they saw this as uh, very helpful in in coping with. Um, hospital tragedy, tragedies or um, the understanding the intricacies of a case, uh, death and other issues. Um, learning opportunities and positive work experience were seen as a, a um, positive coping strategy. So they were seen as extremely vital in the alleviation of stress in the hospital setting as they were described by the majority of respondents as a way to gain confidence and reduce uncertainty in constructive work environments. So um, learning opportunities allowed individuals to take the theoretical background of conditions and start applying it in a practical setting and uh, get the necessary skills and exposure that they need. This helped them to better cope with the demands of the workplace. Um, hospitals that followed protocols and gave effective communication also seemed to alleviate stress. So although the absence of protocols did not induce stress per se, those who had clear guidelines and protocols were significantly less st stressful than those that didn't. Uh, respondents also believed that Early communication on things like rosters promoted a learning environment and gave interns the opportunity to plan ahead for themselves. Um, psychological support and debriefing, we have touched on these a, a few times, but um, uh, uh, respondents obvious had contrasting views regarding the psychological support available to them provided by hospitals with some of them saying that, you know, protocols and counselling were, were good when people were exposed to blood or needle, needle prick injuries. However, when it came to services outside of that, they weren't readily available with many of them being concerned about the confidentiality of their, their files and didn't want to have a, a file in the hospital. Um, and debriefing opportunities with senior colleagues were seen to be as extremely valuable uh, and it gave them a different pers perspective and reminded in terms that all doctors have gone through similar experiences, be it death or error. So these were um, seen as very helpful, but in terms noted that they were very infrequent. Um, Clear and effective management and leadership. So interns noted that small adjustments in management and leadership greatly changed the way a department operated. So they believe that effective management of departments by consultants, uh, where uh, setting clear expectations and holding other people accountable, 
made the departments so much less stressful, allow them to cope better than those that were poorly run. Uh, teamwork as well was another factor that allowed interns to cope better, um, as a, allowed them to collaborate and provide support. And, um, you know, with people being team players, uh, they were able to learn a lot from their colleagues and it, it really helped them in terms of their extremely challenging workplace. So those were environment initiated in terms of in individual coping strategies. Um, there's a number of them, so I'm just going to run through them very briefly. So uh, university training respondents explained that some uh, courses at university allow them to cope better with the psychological demands of hospitals where uh, other universities had not adequately prepared them. So some had, had breathing classes and personal development sessions or breaking news courses, uh, breaking bad news courses that taught them to deal with these difficulties. Um, support structures was a, another thing. So interns had, uh, you know, it is extremely difficult to deal with the emotional strain of internship and um, the interns looked at uh, both family support structures and colleague support structures and felt that all each provided its own uh, pros and cons with colleagues being able to provide um, advice and, su and support from a professional perspective while um, families could provide um, you know, love and emotional care, if I, if I can put it that way. Uh, talking, venting and socialising are implied on, in many aspects of coping. It is essentially a form of communication and it is one of the few ways that people are able to express their emotions. Um, this took place in a lot of different settings with uh, interns explaining that, you know, they'd often go out and pry or, or look for um, uh, uh, opportunities to socialise and just to debrief and talk and vent. And they say this happens on a daily basis. Uh, there's not a day that goes by, by that they do not vent. Um, there was a particularly interesting aspect in terms of the use of alcohol. They, um, they mentioned that, you know, going for a drink was not a more adaptive coping me um, mechanism in this case, but it provided them an opportunity to um, get social support in a less formal setting. Um, a few candidates m mentioned using anti antidepressants to cope with anxiety, stress, stress and death of the hospitals. Uh, many interns turned to their textbooks, the internet and various applications to source references for their decision making, just to build confidence, making sure that they hadn't made errors. Um, time management and rostering provided uh, interns the opportunity to cope with the demands better and allowed them to, to plan short term, medium, uh, so that they they could plan their, their time accordingly and um, all come to work early if they knew, knew they needed to get things done. And uh, these rosters often alleviated some pressure. Um, uh, interns explained the importance of clear and honest communication, which alleviates stress and tension in the work environment. Uh, respondents. Mm, highlighted that numerous occasions that that made mistakes with patients and they were unaware of these issues and they said well, if um, colleagues would just be honest with them and tell them what issues they've made, uh, mistakes they had made then they can sort that out which helped to cope with um, stress. Uh, interns explained that coping was difficult as they often felt bur burnt out and overworked and they in order to get, gain a renewed sense of perspective in relation to their ability and effort, uh, that admitted that the demands of medicine could consume their lives. So it was noted as important to take a step back and gain an understanding of the bigger picture and accept that you know there will be up, ups and downs, and remind themselves that they were only human. Um, technology applications and YouTube. So a lot of interns have moved towards. 
um, these applications to make sure that they can refer to uh, information that they need that's really readily available. So um, they would Google a procedure um, to make sure that they're doing it right. Love for the profession was also seen uh, as a way to cope better. Those people felt that, you know, they really loved uh, the profession, that they were making a difference to the community. Um, so this is particularly rewarding. Sleep and rest was important. Holidays and weekends away, exercise and sport, hobbies, meditation, uh, TV, games, uh, religion and prayer were all, all been um, seen in different studies before. So I'm just going to, sorry. Mm. So well adaptive coping strategies. Um, the the biggest one was avoidance. So several participants described wanting to get away from the hospital environment, stating they were stressful, hectic, and unpleasant. Um, response, uh, however, respondents confirmed that it was extremely difficult, as they were required to use their phones to access blood results, and individual they were always very accessible. Um, as mentioned earlier, many individuals would take sick days or mental health days, and this was considered another way of avoiding the hospital. Uh, although not necessarily a coping mechanism per se, um, many interns would resort to, to crying and mentioned it was a way to release frustra frustration or alleviate stress. And some interns also sold calls. So, um, this involves paying another intern uh, a, a, an agreed price so that they <laughs> they would do the call. Um, and interns also explain that some individuals come out with advice uh, after medical school or after university, and this often was a good or bad habit that um, that they brought with them to internship, whether it be turning to alcohol, binge eating, drugs, whatever the case might be. Um, one individual in particular mentioned the displacement of emotions of so getting angry and short tempered, irritable with others uh, in, the, in his immediate re uh, environment, stating that he was <laughs> there was no particular reason. Um, and some interns um, dealt with it negatively with a self blame, denial, and, and negative self reflection. So these were some of the the major issues. One participant actually explained that, you know, they had been blamed for a maternal death and was used as scapegoat. So you start to question what you've done as, as an intern. I'm not going to go through these quotes. I just want to get to my interventions and recommendations. So you can look at those quotes in your own time. Um, the interventions and recommendations is important that interventions address organizational issues alongside interventions directed as at interns so that individuals are able to cope with less severe stresses in the future. Um, communication, reflective dialogue and feedback interventions should be used as a way to improve relationships among the hospital workforce as per relationships and negative interactions were a major contributor of stress for interns. Increased emphasis should be placed on the learning experiences as they play a pivotal role in maintaining interns resilience towards work demands. Hospitals should consider introducing more compulsory tests. These tests should cover the absolute essentials, the must know for each department, but should be supported by tutorials uh, above and beyond the academic war grounds conducted by some of the hospitals. It would also be beneficial to make certain tutorials compulsory at the start of each rotation. For instance, a tutorial on how to resuscitate a neonate on day one of their pediatrics rotation which should reduce stress, increase patient care, and leave interns better prepared for this inevitable encounter. Short-term interventions in public health care should look at 
improving resource allocation and strengthening the healthcare services through the appropriate training, distribution, and retention of healthcare professionals. National policies should uh, look at the entire medical healthcare system as a continuous form of talent management and career succession planning, ensuring that there is clear talent pipeline from university up until specialist positions. Rather than freezing posts, the DOH should be making posts available to senior doctors, firstly to minimise patient load and secondly to strengthen the system and the training of future doctors. Should also look at increasing the availability of registrar training posts available to doctors, an imperative that uh, interventions aimed at interns accommodate their demanding work roles and responsibilities. The strategies that noted um, as effective include mindfulness and uh, type training programs, which largely consisted of meditation, yoga, relaxation techniques, and exercise. Um, and the secondary category focused on coping and solution focused strategies, um, which encompass behavioral changes and positive coping strategies. These are all things that can be considered uh, for, for interns. Considered, uh, considering the limited resources and time available uh, to accredited hospitals and interns alike, the most practical solutions would uh, encompass the introduction of coping and solution focused strategies as they require less intervention or time uh, in terms of sessions uh, as, as opposed to mindfulness training, which is quite resource intensive. So in terms of reflective groups, interns in instinctively turn to informal support groups, which help them cope better with stresses, but they could also benefit from formal support groups that included senior colleagues. Um, short sessions of stress management training are uh, considered to be effective. So given limited time available to medical interns, uh, it might be beneficial for stress management programs to include uh, relaxation techniques. Um, for interns. So what can we as industrial psychologists or the, the role of an IP in the hospital? So uh, interventions highlighted above have been noted as important for the reduction of stress in the hospital setting while also improving individual coping mechanisms. However, if there's, there's no one to coordinate, implement and monitor these changes, and interactions in the South African context, they'll be likely to fail. So I've realized that many of these interventions highlighted above have uh, or could be supplemented or by trained psychology personnel illustrating the impact that psychology profession can have in the hospital context. Uh, Hirokawa illustrates the effective use of the psychologist to help design and implement a stress management program while also making use of assertive communication training in the hospital. Uh, on an individual and an organizational level. So these form part of the industrial psychologist training, identifying workplace psychopathology, coaching, uh, training and development, leadership, understanding team dynamics, uh, which support the idea that the introduction of the industrial or occupational psychologist into these difficult workplace settings would be an, um, an effective way of identifying and addressing issues uh, within the public healthcare setting. Um, this suggests that hospitals and their staff may benefit from introduction of industrial or occupational psychologists as strategic personnel to drive change, facilitate, uh, facilitate training, provide coaching and monitor interactions. Psychologists will be able to coach senior doctors on sensitivity if, uh, issues and better manage team dynamics and numerous challenges faced by junior doctors. Occupational psychologists could also fill the psychological support gap that was noted as a major concern by interns in the study. Um, they will be able to create a safe uh, work environment for individuals to admit when they are unable to cope with the demands of the workplace, providing an outsider pers perspective on issues faced by interns and hospitals alike, while also supporting them in debriefing instances. Um, occupational psychologists can also act as an intermediary to senior doctors and nurses uh, to not take advantage of unsuspecting interns and holding people accountable. So these individuals will be able to act as an objective mediator or re reprimand individuals and provide fear feedback without uh, fear of backlash, which is noted as a common problem in the study. Mm -hmm. um, just in conclusion, Although many studies highlighted similar stresses, the degree, frequency and nature of stresses in the South African context appears to be more severe 
with mismanagement and leadership issues also impacting on the work environment of interns. Um, interns find themselves facing major ethical dilemmas, uh, trauma cases and language barriers, safety concerns, among numerous other issues that have been highlighted in the, the literature. Coping strategies adopted by South African interns are consistent with findings from uh, international literature with support structures um, and the need to talk with and still the most prevalent strategies adopted by interns. It appears that uh, it is apparent from the study that no matter how well a hospital functions or the number of coping strategies interns adopt, interns will always experience some level of stress due to the nature of the work they do, and this will be unavoidable. However, many of the problems and stresses experienced by interns in the South African context can be fixed and should be addressed. Um, the world suffers a lot, not because of violence of bad people, but because of the silence of good people. And that's Napoleon Bonaparte. And I would just like to thank, thank all my participants for their time and efforts. And my, uh, the, I would like to thank uh, Prof. Irene Streisand and Dr. Samaria Neal for their a continued support. Thank you for listening and I apologize for for the bit of a rush at the end. Thanks.